God locates me. Let's begin to talk to the Lord. Father, my heart is open. Father, my ears are open. Let my word locate me. Give me the understanding of the word that is mine. Let's pray. The understanding of your word that is mine. It is not all that is yours, but the understanding of the word that is yours, ask for it. Begin to ask for it right now. Say, Lord, use your servant for me. I have come, Lord. Fill me with fresh revelation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed and amen. I pray once again, your heart be open. Now, this evening, we are starting in the Bible study. This topic, it should take us to the end of the year, by the grace of God. Every Wednesday like this. Uh, the reason why we are not going to really take up the prayer session today is because, you know, we just concluded the prayer and fasting. So, we won't start Bible study with fire, fire. But next week, we'll take 10 minutes of prayer, then the Bible studies will go on. Now, we are looking at this topic, Bible pattern for living as a Christian. Now, that's what we'll be looking at. Bible pattern for living as a Christian. And throughout this topic, by the grace of God, we'll be looking at um, issues of life and how, as a Christian, we should handle them. Issues of life and how, as a Christian, you know, people don't, people, so many people don't know that um, uh, being a Christian uh, is, uh, is not a religion. Being a Christian is a relationship born out of an encounter. Now, you can be born by Christians. Does not make, that does not make you a Christian. That you are born by Christians doesn't make you a Christian. Uh, if you say, ah, I'm a Christian because I was born by a Christian. My, my daddy is John. My mommy is Mary. Now, that is the religious part of Christ. You are just a religious person. But being a Christian is far beyond it. It's not a... Uh, by that it's it's a relationship that is born out of what an encounter now one of the problems we have today in our society and uh, in the church today is that we have so many people that have joined the church that in various churches but they do not have a relationship with god born from an encounter so most people are just religious people and they are the ones causing problems in the body that's why you hear people say, and that man says he's a Christian. Ah, he just did so and so thing. Yes, he's just a religious person. You cannot be a true child of God, a true Christian, and commit blunder because it's a relationship born out of an encounter. Let me show you what an encounter is. Let me show you relationship. I'll just show you an example before I start preaching. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, look at this young man now as his seafarer. Please stand up. Come. Now, he doesn't need, if somebody come now and say, and look at him and say, and say to him, Uriola, you are a girl. Look up now, don't close your eyes. Go and sit down, it's not here. You know? If somebody comes to him and tell him, you are a girl. I don't think he needs to argue. Because he has certain things that made him understand that he's a boy. Now, that's how Christianity is too. When you have an encounter with Jesus that now makes you to now make up your mind that you are going to relate with God, your lifestyle will be different. Do you understand what I mean? Now, I gave my life to Christ 1991. I used to say October 1990, but it, it, it flowed into 1991. And uh, I was a Christ, I was going to church before then. Though my mother was forcing me to church. But that 1990, I, I had an encounter. A pastor preached to me and asked me some questions. One of them is, if I die today, will I make heaven? I couldn't answer that question. And while he kept preaching, I started crying. Now, by the time I finished crying, he allowed me to cry. He now asked me, do you want to give your life to Christ? Now, nobody will ever force you to give your life to Christ. Now, neither give do you want to give your life to Christ? I said, yes. He said, now say these prayers after me. So we took the confessional prayers together. And by the time I gave my life to Christ, you know one understanding I discovered? I discovered that I started a new relationship. 
and for me to be able to flow well in that relationship i must understand the principles guiding that relationship so that's why today i have come up to teach us as children of god bible pattern for living as christians let's start with uh, first peter chapter 2 verse 21 we have a lot of scriptures to read today to prove my point that jesus is a perfect example first peter chapter 2 verse 21 says for even hereunto were you called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example look at that leaving us an example that's what that ye should follow his steps so it means that there is a pattern when we say there's a pattern there's there's an established order this this is the pattern it's just like you you go you have entered this church now it's a pattern that the altar is in front Abby, it's established altar is in front now you know you have come to a church now you know that you can't find any other thing but bible you have we have anointing oil that's we have some of these things you can't find me come now and now say okay uh praise the lord i want to pray i brought a candle you to go and buy you know i won't do that it's not in our pattern so jesus came to establish the pattern and that's what we are going to follow uh, we're going to look at this evening so listen i wrote here christianity is about uh, sorry that's what sorry jesus our lord is a perfect example of what christianity is all about he also gave inspiration to man to write the bible for for our guidance why is the bible written it is for our guidance now for our guidance let's confirm that second timothy 3 16 is just we are still at the introduction we we'll start the message very soon second uh, uh timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 showing us that is uh, the scriptures the bible was written by the inspiration of god look at it all scripture is given by what inspiration of god and is profitable for what for doctrine profitable for what for reproof profitable for what for correction profitable for instruction in righteousness so all scriptures what are the scriptures the bible is written under the influence of the holy spirit hallelujah so let's follow so what do we have today as christians what are we going to study today now our main study will be taken from acts of the apostles chapter 1 we're going to look at from verse 15 to 26 hallelujah acts chapter 1 from verse 15 to verse 26 acts 1 15 oh thank you son screen now look at this this is the first church that jesus established after he resurrected this is the first church now let's look at how the first church handled situation the first situation that came up after the resurrection of jesus is this one and in those days peter stood up in the midst of the disciples all together the number of names were about what a hundred and twenty and he said now he wanted to address the first uh, uh, situation that came up men and brethren the scripture had to be fulfilled which the holy spirit spoke before by the mouth of david concerning judas who became a guide to those who arrested him let's go on for he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry mm -hmm. obtained a part in this ministry now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling headlong he burst open in the middle and all his entrails gushed out verse 19 and it became uh, known to all those dwelling in jerusalem so the field is called in their own language akel dama this is field of blood that is field of blood now look at for the second time in verse 15 he talked about scriptures the second time he's saying for it is written in the book of psalms let his dwelling place be desolate 
and let no one live in it and let another take his office now verse 21 let's now address the situation is what peter wants to say therefore of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the lord jesus went in and out among us yes 22 beginning from the baptism of john to that day which he, he was taken up from us one of these men must become witness with us of his resurrection wait for me here now what was peter trying to do he said okay men and brethren i read in scriptures that uh, the issue of uh, a uh, uh, betrayer was written now how are we going to address it i also read in scriptures that it was written let his place be what be given to somebody else so men and brethren we have a situation in our hand let us now follow what the scriptures have said now if you now read it to the last verse verse 26 you will see that they now voted according to what scripture said and they chose a new disciple now what am i bringing out i wrote something down here and i want us to see listen hallelujah when the first issue came came up uh in the first church the bible says he addressed it by referring the people to the word he said the scripture must need be fulfilled now it shows us that as christians we should live by the word of god now what's the bible pattern for every christian what's the standard for our living the bible now that's why the moment you are born again you know the covenant you have entered it's not covenant of just coming to church you that you are born again you have not entered the covenant of saying ah i must be a worker you enter the covenant to live your life according to what the word of god that's why you see that when that issue came up here how did they address it they didn't sit down and say men and brethren let's let's just talk let's just talk now they undo the issue scripturally so the moment you are born again that's one thing that is today's christians don't know you signed a covenant to live your life in accordance to the bible that this is the covenant i've signed i'm going to live my life in accordance to the bible and do you know that this was exactly what jesus our lord himself said in matthew chapter 4 from verse 3 the bible says and uh, the shepherd came to him and said uh, uh, i can see you are hungry he said uh, if you are the son of god why not turn this stone to bread and what was Jesus' response in, in verse 4? He quoted the scripture. And what was the scripture? He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by what? By every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Father. Which means that Jesus was saying, this is the pattern. If you want to live your life, make heaven, please God, fulfill his purpose, your life must be controlled by the word. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, this is the standard for Christian living. This is the pattern. Now, I'm, throughout this uh, year, every Wednesday I'll be showing you. In fact, do you know that I was reading one part of Corinthians? I will tell you maybe next week or uh, as we get there. He was talking about crisis in church. And he said, why must a, a fellow Christian take another Christian to court? When you have leaders in church. I, I, am I communicating? So we, our life is different from the life of unbelievers. So every Christian must understand. Write this down. What makes you a Christian is not the position you occupy in church, but your commitment towards living in accordance to what the word of God instructs. I come again. Write it down. What makes you a Christian is not the position you occupy in church, but your commitment towards living in accordance to what the word of God instructs. I'll come again. What makes you a Christian is not the position you occupy in church, but your commitment towards living in accordance to what the word of God says. Show us again that Acts chapter 1, this time 20 to 23. Now, because of those of you writing, I come again. What makes you a Christian is not the position you occupy in church. You can be a pastor and not a Christian. You can be an evangelist and not a Christian. You can be a prophet and not be a Christian. Hello? 
You can be an apostle and not be a Christian. I've seen several ministers of God like that. That's why, you know, when Jesus Christ was speaking, he said, many will come to me on that day, last day, and they will say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out them? You can even be casting out demons and not be a Christian. He said, and I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew thee. So, what makes you a Christian is not the position you occupy in church, but your commitment towards living in accordance to what the word of God says. I say, show us that Acts chapter 1, 20 to 23. Look at it again. That was how they handled the, the first situation that appeared in the first church. It was done in accordance to the word. For, look at it for, for it is written in the book of Psalms. They were quoting the book of Psalms. And that book of Psalms was making the book of Acts of the Apostles. The first documentation was from the book of Psalms. Let his dwelling be place, let his dwelling place be desolate. And let one live in it. And let another take his office. So now the word of God is saying, let another take his office. And Peter said, okay, let us cast lots. Who will take his office? So what makes you a Christian is not position. It's not even your name. What makes you a Christian is your, your commitment towards living in accordance to the word. What, that's what makes you a Christian. I have about four more questions we are going to now answer as we go deeper. Now let's answer this question quickly does the word of god have answer to all things i know it is crossing somebody's heart pastor sir was there yahoo yahoo when the word of god was written so the word of god cannot have answer to everything i will answer you now somebody says sir sir you don't understand there was no uh, uh, aircraft in those days now there's aircraft now. Does the word of God has answer to everything? Because I, I heard somebody say, why will you be allowing this old book to determine your life? Now why will you be tying your destiny to an old book in a, in a, in a current world? I will answer you. What's the question again? Does the word of God have answer for all things? The answer is yes. And I will show you why it is yes. Now, the answer to situations of life can come from the world, the word of God in two forms. Because the word of God is actually, in, is actually in two forms. Now, there's what we call the letter of the word of God. Show me 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Now, there's what is called the letter of the word and there's what is called the spirit of the word. I will explain. But let's confirm all these things in scriptures where in the Bible study. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Let's read together. One, two, and let's go. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of what? The new covenant. Not of letter, but of what? But of spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Let's not stop there. Show me John chapter 6 and verse 63. John chapter 6 and verse 63. We are also going to read together. After the count of three, one, two, and three. Let's go. It is the spirit which gives life. For, sorry, the flesh profit nothing. Let's go on. The word that I speak to you are what? Spirit and they are life. So, listen. Don't forget the question. Does the word of God have answer to all things? The word of God has been written, Pastor, over 2,000 years ago. There was no computer when it was written. So, is the word of God still applicable? Bring the keyboard down a bit. Is the word of God still like applicable now? I said yes. And I said the reason is because the word of God is true. This, is, this one word is true. We have what? The letter. Now, what is the letter? The letter is the one that is written in your language that you can just read and understand. Even a layman will read it and understand. Hello? That, okay, okay, you have read it. Matthew 19, the Bible says, Therefore, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. That is the letter of the word. Now, if we leave it to the letters alone, you won't get answers. But there is the spirit of the word. Listen, when we talk about the spirit of the word, some people call it revelation. Hello? Now, but what does that mean? It means that you read the letters of the word and the Holy Spirit brings a deeper a, a translation that meets your present condition.
Now, that's why the word of God has answer to everything. So, if you're only reading letters, you say the word of God is outdated. But the Bible says the word of God is living. It's not dead. The word of God is active. It's not weak. Hello? Now, when you read the word and you have a current situation, and you, do, you, you are looking for solution. Lord, what do I do? Lord, what do I do? How can I solve this problem that I have now? Read the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to interpret. Now, it is by the interpretation of the Holy Spirit that you can now have access to the spirit of the word. To what? The spirit of the word. I come again. To the spirit of the God has used it for me several times. When there were situations standing in front of me. I will share maybe two or three experiences. Now, there was a time we had a woman in our church. Um, this woman. Uh, we, we got to know her through our evangelical team. They went for evangelism. We didn't know that the man, that her husband, was not her first husband. And the man too, that man too, the woman was not his first wife. All the women he had gotten married to, we didn't know until later. Uh, none of them had a child for him. So he was married to this particular one. Then our evangelism team went for evangelism. While they were advertising Jesus, you know, talking about Jesus, the woman told them about their condition. That everywhere they have gone, they said nobody will be pregnant for her husband. Because the mother is a witch. And uh, in their coven, the covenant is that until the man is 50, he will not see his first child. And as at that time, the man was just about going to 40 or a little bit above, above 40. And our evangelical team now told him, if you come to Jesus, come to our church, God will do it for you. He said, are you sure? The, man, the woman told her husband, the, woman, the man decided to come. We led him to Christ. He told us he was an abalist. He left all his charms and said to me, Pastor, I won't throw them away. I will only keep them aside for one year. I want to test your God. So we prayed for him. The woman got pregnant. Now, that was not even the test. It was one of the testimonies. When she now got pregnant, they said a woman used to appear whenever any woman becomes pregnant for him and she will punch their stomach, they will see blood and that's the end. So this woman appeared again and punched this woman. And she saw blood. And she started crying. Now, in the natural sense, when pregnancy is not up to three months, it's still, uh, it has not yet formed. And the bleeding was so much. So the woman now came to me and said, Pastor, I don't know. Though your God answered us, we are pregnant. I got pregnant, but it has happened again, you know. I have seen blood. And I'm still even saying it. And while she was speaking to me, do you know what crossed my mind? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Now, let's go there. Show me Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. The Holy Spirit just brought that picture to my heart. Jeremiah 1 5. Are you there? Okay. I saw this scripture now came. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew, the, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to a nation. How does this scripture relate with the issue? As the scripture crossed my mind, you know what the Holy Spirit said? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew thee. Now, if you were known ever before you were formed, follow me, it means that the blood is not actually the baby. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. If you were known ever before you were formed, it means that you did not begin when you were formed. Now, somebody, somebody say, somebody say, Mrs. Christopher, ever before you came to gospel, I have known you. It means I have seen you somewhere ever before you what? Came to God's power. So that scripture came to my mind. Before you were formed in the womb, I knew thee. Before you were born, I sanctified you. So that first one started coming before you were formed. Before you were formed. That was the Holy Ghost working in my heart. And I said to the woman, woman, I said, sir, stop crying. That blood you saw is excess blood. Because the baby in your womb was known by God. 
before it entered your womb. It cannot be the blood that you have sent. He said, okay, daddy, what do I do? I said, don't go to the hospital for now. If you go to the hospital, based on medical science, they will tell you, flush or whatever he said. Hold on for like two months. After two months, come back to see me. After two months, she came back to see me. I prayed with her. Now, go for scan. She went, she was five months pregnant. How did the Holy Spirit answer that case? It answered, solved that problem by what? Revelation. What most of you know is the letters of the word. And you know that, see, the way they extract wine from palm tree is the way you extract revelation from the written word. You don't get the spirit of the word without meditation. Ah, uh, our father in, in faith, Bishop David Ripple said, one day he was just reading the Bible. And he saw, he was just reading that, the letter, where the Bible says, for Jesus was made poor, that I might be made rich. He said he was reading, he was made poor that I become, he was made poor that I become, he was made poor that I become. He said he now screamed, I can never be poor. And he was looking at, what does he mean? This man is still poor. He said because Jesus took my poverty, that I may be rich. So he has taken my poverty, which means I'm not poor. Can you see? I won't see myself as poor again. He said, don't say, sir, I didn't have money to eat. Too. But he stopped seeing himself. Do you understand? And that's the beginning of what we call the transformation you need. Now let me ask you, does the word of God have answer for to all things? Yes. There may be a heavy situation in front of you and you don't have the letter eh, that can solve it. You know what you should do? Meditate over the letter and the spirit will jump out. I've had several encounters with witches and wizards. I don't like sharing it because when I share it, our children used to be afraid. So, may I shake your head? Uh -huh. Look up. I've had several encounters like that. I was sharing, uh, the first one I had, I was still a youth that time. I was sleeping in my room. And all of a sudden, a bird started chasing me from my dream. As I opened my eyes, I saw women sat around my bed. Oh, he's already afraid. Let me stop. So let me ask the question again. Does the word of God has answer for all things? Yes. Like I said, some by letters, which is direct written word, some by the spirit, which is Holy Ghost interpreted words. Holy Ghost interpreted words. At times it may not be the Holy Ghost interpreting it directly. It could be the Holy Spirit using his servant to bring interpretation. And it will minister to the case in front of you then you have answers. So the word of God is ever current. If anyone is saying, how can you take this old book to solve a new problem? Tell that person that what that person lacks is the spirit of the word. Now, the next question, next question. Hallelujah. I say praise the Lord. How can we develop a word-based lifestyle? How can we develop a word-based lifestyle. Now, what was, what's the meaning of that question? Pastor, how can I grow to the point that everything about my life will be, will, be, will be guided by the word of God? How can I grow to that point? Now, let's look at it. Let's look at the answer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I put it in A, B, and C. Then we might close with it. A, we should 
be committed to studying it so as to have the knowledge of it. It starts with studying to have what? To acquire knowledge first. I come again, I will explain. We should be committed to studying it so as to have the knowledge of it. You study to have what? Knowledge first. I will tell you why you need that knowledge. <laughs> ah, shagad of skin that they say. Most of you don't know that the human mind is a very big store. Look at Luke chapter 6, verse 45. The human mind is like a memory card. That's why you'll be, you'll be surprised. A 50-year-old man will be telling you what happened when he was six years old. The human mind, the human mind is very strong. I didn't say 25. Did I say 25? 45. Luke 6, 45. So as somebody will not be saying, why am I wooing them? Verse 5. A good man, look at this, out of the good treasures of his heart, bring get forth good and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth the mouth sorry of the heart his mouth speaks now which means that your mind has the capacity for storage it's a storehouse to live a word based life the first thing you need to do is to devote yourself to study in order to acquire knowledge first. I will tell you why you need that knowledge. When I was now studying, I discovered from John 14, 26. You will read that one too. Put it on screen. Listen, in John chapter 14, verse 26, one of the duties of the Holy Spirit is to bring to your remembrance. For instance, when a situation arises, you want to fly up. The Holy Spirit will go to the store of your heart to bring forth a word that you have studied and you have kept. Hello? To remind you that as a child of God, you cannot fight. Show me now. John 14, 26. The way you are looking at me, as if I'm the only one that is here. Now, look at it. It's about the helper. What's happening? He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. That's one. He brings revelation. And bring to your remembrance. And bring to your... The Holy Ghost cannot bring to remembrance what was never in your memory. You know, you don't use remember for something you, you have not known before. Do you understand? You can use the word remember for something you have either known and forgot. You forgot. So try to remember now. But if you have not seen that thing before, you don't know it before, they can't tell you remember now. You say remember what? So one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit is that when you are studying the word, you are studying the word, you are investing in your spirit, you are storing it up there, a time is going to come there will be challenges, you know. There will, be, there will be situations where you will need those words. The Holy Ghost will now bring it back to you at the points of temptation. That's why I see. Let me tell you this. If you don't devote time for a personal commitment to Bible study, you will not be giving the Holy Spirit enough tools to help you. In my 30 years experience as a pastor, the Holy Ghost has really helped me. I've read several books. If I'm still reading. I've read my Bible cover to cover several times. When I gave my life to Christ, that October 1990, I gave myself to the Bible. Please put your phones now and let your heart be here. I gave my time to the Bible. I was always reading. 
Now, do you know that it was my commitment to the scriptures because I was always reading, always reading. Within one year, I'd become a pastor in the church where I was raised. Within one year. I was in that church for three years before God gave me a call, an assignment. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself an approved for man unto God. So, the more we study, places where a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends, most of the people who gave a life to Christ, they fall in under several temptations. But at points where I would have fallen, I would have fallen, you know, one scripture will just come. At times, the Holy Ghost may not bring it as a scripture, it may bring the story. Hello? At times, it may not be the story, it may bring the topic. But you need to have put, you do the work of bringing the word from the book eh, into your mind first. Some of you want the Holy Ghost to carry the Bible and put it in your mind. The Holy Ghost cannot carry the Bible that you didn't study. The I traveled, I traveled briefly this afternoon. As I was driving on that express, I wanted to do I did I, you know, I own and open my eyes. And something said, you will die on this express. I was the only one in the car. But do you know what crossed my mind? He that watcheth over me neither sleeps no slumber. So it boosts my confidence. Because I've read it. I was preaching the morning prayer online two days ago. I told the people, now let us begin to ask for our portion of God's blessing. And I said, some of you will be saying, how do I know that I have a portion? He in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside what? Still not struggling water. Not boiling water. Not the one that will burn my tongue. And I began to pray, Lord, I connect into the provision you have for me. The Holy Ghost cannot bring to your remembrance what you don't have in your store. Now, we all have houses where we live. Even if you live in one room, at least you have a store where you put food. It may not be uh, store. Your own store may be a uh, uh, container of, uh, of paint. Some of you, your store is nylon. That's where your, your rice and your everything is. Esma, Esma, will you be looking for rice that you didn't buy? No, answer me now. <laughs> or you wake up in the morning and say, ah, this morning, let me go to my store and take a cornflakes and milk. And all you have in your store is Gary. Do, do you get what I'm saying? You have to put something in your store to want to contact, uh, draw from. It's the same thing as your bank account. You didn't save any money into your account. Nobody called you that they are sending money. And I said, I don't know. Let me go and use my ATM to test. You now go to POS. Oh, yeah. 5,000. What will you continue to hear? Insufficient. Some will say balance, some will say fun. So, the same thing. When there is a situation and you are saying, Holy Ghost, teach me what to do. Holy Ghost, teach me what to do. Holy Ghost, we say, insufficient fun. Because you didn't save anything in your store. Say here. And can I tell you this truth? Eh? Look up, church. There is no place you can find the greatest wisdom than this place, the word. I have seen situations that, terrible conditions that the word of God helped me to solve. We don't have all the time. Did you learn something? What's the question we're answering? How can we develop a word based lifestyle. So the A is we should be committed to studying it so as to have the knowledge of it so you have in your store. The Holy Spirit 
will have enough materials to bring to our memory whenever we need guidance from the word. Now, let's look at B. B. We should try to, sorry, we should, we should try never to allow the voice of the people or our emotion to prevent us from making the word of God our pattern for living. Let me come again. We should try never to allow the voice of the people or our emotion to prevent us from making the word of God our pattern for living. Now, don't allow your emotion, don't allow the voice of the people to make you feel that I cannot succumb to the word. Now, I want to pick this one and add it to what I said on Sunday. See, most times, eh, at first, you must enforce this your body to fall in line. Yesterday, I went for a program on, uh, 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 on uh, I don't know the name of the, we are reacting on channel on uh, Sunday. I was on radio. Somebody invited me for an interview. So after that program, I don't know the person, somebody collected my phone, my number, and sent me a message on WhatsApp. Now listen to the message. The person said, sir, I'm a child of God. I've been born again. Sir, my prayer life is hot. For the past 10 years, I've maintained about 33 hours of praying every day. That person try to pray more than me. For someone to be praying three, three hours every day at a stretch, he pray more than me. He said, Bossa, I am struggling with masturbation. I cannot do without masturbating. I have done everything possible to stop, but I have not been able to. Please help me. What shall I do? I smiled. So I picked my phone to answer him. You know why I wanted to I answer him? Because when I first gave my life to Christ too, I was a youth. I also did it too. And I was also struggling to stop. Until one day, God said to me, son, it is determination that activates grace. I come again. God said to me, as Prince, son, it is determination that activates grace. If you have not made up your mind to stop something, there will not be grace for it. Mm. Many years ago, so I told myself I will stop masturbating. So whenever the desire to do it uh, I came those days, I decided to refuse. I won't do it. So and I told him, I said, see, I have never seen the Lord take any nature from anyone. God won't take your sinful nature from you. Because you will make him a sinner if he takes it from your hand. God will only teach you to drop it. Am I communicating? Are you sure you are here? So I told him, the first thing, you can't conquer it until you have made up your mind, I won't do this again. Will the desire stop immediately? I said, no. Then I told him the second thing that I did. That helped me to conquer it. I said, number two, you don't masturbate eh, if you don't have some memories in your mind for sex. You must have had memories of people's naked pictures. You've watched some uh, terrific movies like that. I said, so block the source that feeds your mind. I told him about five and the person started thanking me. Thank you, sir. I didn't know. I thought it's only by praying, praying, praying. You can't live a word-based life by praying alone. You live a word-based life by what? Enforcing yourself to follow scriptures. Now, let's look at what the Bible says. Let's look at what the Bible says. We are going to see this, look at these scriptures from three different versions of the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 9, 26 and 27. We we'll look at King James we look at NIV and we look at the Message Bible. 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. I have one more, one, one more answer and we close. We have 10 minutes more. Continue next week. Now look at this. Verse 9. He said, therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one 
who beats the air, which means I don't do things without aim. Now look at 27, where the message is. 27. It's about I discipline what? You didn't hear me. Let's start from the beginning, but what? What does it mean to discipline? Ma? Be bold, be bold, be free. It's a Bible study. To subject yourself to a pattern. Yes, yes. I want to hear more opinions. To, to, to torture yourself. Caution. Yes, to caution yourself. Yes, discipline is also to caution. Any other word? Now, listen. You have all spoken well. In those days when, we, when uh, I was younger, uh, I'm still young. In, uh, in those days when I was like 16, that I used to do what Chisoms used to do. That when they send you to go and buy something, you have branch, you play football. I joined one club that time. They called them the uh, uh, More Blessing. I used to play, you know, 20 minutes. This particular day, I now followed my friends to Railway, uh, the call that place Railway Stadium. I've never played 90 minutes before. So as we got there, they brought one club. They called them the Net Breakers. They now say, ah, any hey, more blessing? Are you here? You more blessing? Are you here? I said, say we are here. Ah, and we are not more than 11. So our coach was not even around. Our team captain now said, let's face them. We can beat them. I've never played 90 minutes before. You know when you are playing in the backyard of your house, you think it's the same strength. So I was running around, sir. Within 30 minutes, I was out of gas. When they pass the ball to themselves, the opponent, and they want to go, by the time they just turn, if I run like this, I'm on the floor. They pass through me to score up to six, uh, four goals. So I now got offended after that match. I now told our coach, why, why is it that I couldn't last more than 30 minutes on the pitch? The coach said, because you don't used to come for stamina training. So, we used to play football on Thursday when we go to the club. But I don't used to go for Tuesday stamina training. So, I told my coach, I'll come for stamina training. On the day of stamina, I thought I would see football. We didn't see football. But he'll be teaching us how to exercise our body that will make us last long on the pitch. Now, we start every stamina training by jogging. You say, jog around this, the, the, the field. We'll now be jogging. By the time I went to the first one, it's like I wanted, my heart wanted to cut. And I still saw people going up to 10 times. You know why they were finding it easy? They've been doing it for years. By the time I came back from the first stamina training that day, I landed in the hospital. I was taking drugs. The whole of my joints was paining me. My muscles was not used to it. Do you know that by the time I now started doing this regularly, if you want to try what I'm telling you now, you have not done any uh, exercise before, go to the stadium tomorrow. Hmm? Run around, run around. Join those people to do exercise. If you stand up on Friday, it will be a miracle. Praise the Lord. So, the word, come back to it. The word discipline means train yourself. Show me. Paul says, but I discipline my body and put it into subjection. I discipline it by not giving it everything it's asking for. Because your body will keep asking for everything. And put it under subjection, least when I have preached to others, I myself should become this, which means that if you don't know how to put yourself under control and force yourself to obey the word of God, your body is not ready to obey. Show me NIV. Let's look at the NIV version. You know, when I gave my life to Christ, I grew up with NIV. Thank you. Look at this. He said, therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly, without aim. I do not fight like a man beating the air. 27, that's where the message is. No. Look at him. What did he say? I beat 
my body and make it my what? My slave. Which means you will do what I want you to do. This is my body. You will not do what you want to do. We are looking at how to live a world-based life. Now, especially, for instance, look at those of you that are youths now. When you see a lot of people with the, uh, driving different kind of cars, there's this passion that wants to, ah, me too, I'm going to buy my car next year. And you know how much you are earning. Listen, tell your body that is desiring what you cannot afford. You are my slave. You will not be the one to tell me what to do. That I'm okay. Show me quickly. Uh, let's read the message Bible so I can be true with it. Message Bible, message Bible fast. Are you, have you learned something today? Now, this is message. I love this one so much. He says, I, do, I don't know about you, but I am running hard for the finish line. I am giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. 27. I am staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and then missing out myself. You have to enforce yourself. To live a word-based life, you enforce yourself. So learn that. To live a word-based life, you have to enforce yourself. And I summarize here by saying, grace is always activated by determination. We have a role to play if we are going to live as word-based Christians. Take the last answer. C. We should always pray the word of God into manifestation in our lives. So when we read the word of God, we, should, we shouldn't doubt it, but pray it. You know, the first time I read Jesus on the cross, many years ago, I was a young Christian. Ah, how can they slap a man, nail him on the cross, and he will be saying, Father, forgive them. For what? They know not what they are doing. This generation of mountain of fire. You will hear, ah, thunder go kill another power. Now me when I did nail. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you sure you are here? Now, when I saw things like this, many years ago, I started praying, Lord, give me grace to be like Jesus. Give me grace to be like Jesus. I remember one day, so I read where he preached to people for three days and at the third day he told the disciples, we can't leave them going home like this. I pity them. They might fall on the way. I started praying, Lord, please give me the compassion of Jesus. I pray for the compassion of Jesus. Are you sure you are here? So, what's the third thing that makes you live a word-based life? You pray the word. When you see some qualities that you read in the word of God, pray it to happen in your life. Pray for the, that God help me to this point. I saw one that touched me. I'm still praying it till now. But the way God answered it, I say I'm, not, I'm still not satisfied. Now, the case of uh, Elisha, he was in his room. They were making a plan in the king's palace in Syria. Have you read that portion before? And whatever they were planning, Elisha knew. Elisha will now tell the king, don't go to this well, your enemy is waiting for you. Until one day, the king now said, wait, one of us is a traitor. What is happening? Who is giving the king of Israel information? Somebody said, ah, there's one man, his name is Prophet Elijah. The meeting you are having in your bedroom, he's seeing it. When I saw that, I started praying for that kind of gift. Father, I ask for the gift of revelation like Elisha. Let me see deep things. Show me mysteries. Now, you know how God answered me today. At times when I finish preaching, some people will come and say, Sir, were you in our house yesterday? That the preaching is just a, what was happening in our house. Some will say, Sir, the way we were coming, we are coming now. This is what we are discussing. I'm still saying, God, Lord, I'm not yet satisfied. I want that of Elijah. So that where Boko Haram is doing it, I'll just call the military. Hello, they are not in San Bissau. Go to Susu and so please. When you, the reason why some of you can't pray the word is that when you read these things, you doubt it. 
Some of you read and doubt. You say, I know, okay, Shelley. Story last one. Oh, Shelley, oh, it's happening. May the Lord bless our understanding in the name of Jesus. Do we have any questions before we pray? Any question before we pray? Anybody? Okay. No question.